This video is going to be all the information that you would need in order to start using cart flows. So this is what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to have a, just a quick overview of cart flows and then we're going to talk about some of the requirements and optional items that you can add to cart flows. We're going to go over some important reminders and then we're going to make our first flow with cart flows. So what is cart flows? Well, it's a funnel builder for WordPress. It enables you to create any type of funnel that you may want for your website using WordPress. And this would include sales funnels. So the question we get a lot is, does this XYZ work with cart flows? And a good rule of thumb is if it works with WooCommerce, it should work fine with cart flows. So let's go over some of the requirements. Some of these might be obvious, but I'm gonna go over them anyway. First, you're gonna to wanna to use quality web hosting. This is a general rule of thumb for anyone using WordPress to use quality website hosting. We like to recommend SiteGround for shared hosting. And if you want a more hands-off hosting experience, use Manage WordPress Hosting from Liquid Web, WP Engine, or Kinsta. Next, and this is obvious, that Cardflows only works with self-hosted WordPress. It's not a software as a service solution. You control everything that you do with Cardflows. WooCommerce is required for the checkout portion of your funnel. So if you're selling anything in your funnels, it will require the usage of WooCommerce. And you're also going to want to have a page building tool that you would use for your pages to make them look beautiful, your sales pages, your checkout pages, etc. Soon we are going to open up the usage of Gutenberg to create these pages and then it wouldn't require a page builder, but you're going to get the best experience using a page builder building tool. There's some that we recommend. There's some that we provide templates for. However, cart flows will work with just about any page building tool that there is. Next, let's take a look at some of the optional things that you might want to add to enhance what you can do with cart flows. Number one is lead capture. Cart flows doesn't provide a lead capture tool, so you might want to have your own if you're building a funnel where there's lead capture happening in one of these steps in your funnel. Now, depending on the page building tool that you use, it might already include a lead capture component. This is the case if you use Elementor Pro, you use Divi, Beaver Builder, they already include a lead capture element, or you might already have some kind of a lead capture tool. And you'd pretty much need this if you're going to have one of the steps be simply just for capturing leads and delivering some form of a lead magnet. Next, if you want to sell subscriptions, it's going to require WooCommerce subscriptions. It's an add-on. This is more of a WooCommerce thing. If you want to add an affiliate program to your funnels, we recommend Affiliate WP or Affiliate Manager, which happens to be free. And you might want to consider using Jetpack if you're selling physical products and you need to charge shipping and if you need to charge sales tax for the products you sell in your funnels, you might want to consider Jetpack because it adds all of that information and functionality to it for you. Jetpack happens to be free. Okay, next we're going to go over just some quick important reminders to make sure your CartFlows experience is as good as it can be. You're going to need to disable caching. If your web hosting forces caching, such as WP Engine, or if you're using a caching plugin, you need to disable caching on cart flow steps. The reason why is anything e-commerce related is a dynamic page. Every person that lands on that page might have a different list of items in their cart. Those need to be disabled because if you're caching that page, it will show the same exact thing to every user. So you have to disable caching. Most plugins for caching, there's options there to put in URLs that will not be cached. Some hosts, you might have to contact them. For example, WP Engine, you'll have to send them a message and ask them to disable caching and give them the URLs, but you're going to need to disable caching. Uh, next, if you are a CartFlows Pro user, in order to offer upsells and downsells, you'll need to be using the Stripe Payment Gateway or PayPal business account to offer those one-click upsells. 
Uh, next, card flows on all of the individual steps. We'll see this in a moment. It hides your header and footer in all of the custom CSS that's in your theme. This is to prevent conflicts. Also, it's a good rule of thumb to only provide your visitor, your buyer, one option forward. So if you have your header with all these menu options, these are different pathways outside of the funnel. You want to keep your visitor or buyer inside of your funnel. This is why we eliminate the header and footer that's being generated by your theme. It's also a great best practice. Next, you're probably gonna want to make sure your permalinks are set to post name so that the links on each of the steps in your funnel looks as good as it can. If it's not set that way, it might say cart flows step in the URL and most of our customers don't want that and we understand that. So you're gonna wanna set your permalinks to post. This is just a good best practice with WordPress anyway. So let's go take a look at some of those settings really quick right now. Here I am on a WordPress website. First, I'm gonna take a look at those permalink settings. It's gonna be found under settings, permalinks. And like I was saying, we want to set it to post name. So your links will look like this. Okay, next let's go to the cart flow settings. It's cart flows and then settings right here. And there's an option right here where you tell cart flows which page building tool that you're using and that you want to see templates from. So we offer templates for Elementor, Beaver Builder, and Divi. And if you choose other, it will just show no templates when we go to create a new flow. Now, if your page building tool is not in this list, that doesn't mean that cart flows won't work with it. It just means that we don't offer templates for that particular page builder. On this site, I'm using Elementor, so I will choose that. I will click on Save Changes. Now let's create our first flow. I'll click on Flows, and up here, I'm gonna click on Add New, and it's showing us pre-done flows from the template library, but we optionally can click right here where it says create your own and choose this option here to have a flow created where you would add your own design. Now on the templates you see, some of them have this badge that says pro. These are for cart flows pro users because they use features that are only found inside of Cartflows Pro. So I'm going to choose this flow right here. I'll click on the import button. And what this does is it retrieves the entire flow from our template cloud. Now we've created our first flow and we see right here a list of Cartflows steps. So let's first go and talk about what those Cartflows steps are and the options that they have. So the, each step has a step type. We have landing page steps, checkout page steps, and thank you page steps. And if you're a pro user, there's also a step type for upsells and for downsells. Now for each step, there's a title that you can set and a link that you can set. Let me show you. So here is a step right here called landing page. I'm gonna go ahead, click on edit here on the right. Here's where I can change the name of this step. And then this is the link right here. I can click on edit and I can change this link to be whatever I want it to be. Now, after that, there are options inside of each step and each step might have different options available to you so right here I'm in a landing page step and when I scroll down here is the option box and this is what appears for the landing page step if I was in the checkout step it's going to be a little different so here is my checkout step I'll click on edit and then I'll scroll down and you can see there's a lot more options here. So the step options is where most of the configuration settings are gonna be for each individual step. Next, there is the step short code. So we saw right here at the first option of each of these option box will say short codes. And this right here is on this step, the short code to generate the checkout form. And this is how cart flows will work with any page building tools. If you copy and paste this into your design, you will see that that is what generates the checkout. Everything wrapped around it is done and controlled in your page builder. And we have a similar short code in the thank you page step. Landing pages, upsell pages, and downsell pages are a little different. Let me show you. So for the 
the landing page, the short code is really just a link that you would place in a button or anywhere on this step, and it will take the visitor or buyer to the next step. In this case, it is that checkout step. Now for upsells, it's very similar. So when I click on edit to go into an upsell, what we have here is a yes link and a no link. So on an upsell, there's only two paths forward. Yes, add that to my order and no, don't add that to my order. And so you can either create a button and have the yes link be the link in that button and you can have a text-based link for no, you can do whatever you want with these links, but this is how your buyer will choose yes or no on these upsells. So each step is going to have a short code just like that. Now let's take a closer look at the checkout step because that is the one where most of the options appear. So here's my checkout page and it says right here that there's no product assigned. So I'm gonna click on edit and I'm gonna scroll down and you will wanna go through the options in order. So the first thing we would do is select a product. Then if you're using CardFlows Pro, you can optionally add an order bump to this step. You have checkout design options. So there is different column designs, one column, two column, or a two-step checkout. You can set a primary color, your fonts. And for our CartFlows Pro users, if you enable advanced options, there's an input fields style. And by default, the field labels will be above the field. But if you choose floating labels, those field labels will be inside of the field. Then for our CartFlows Pro users, we have checkout field options right here called field editor. So if I enable this, I can choose to hide fields, rearrange fields, change the label of fields, and have control over the column layout for each of the fields. And here's some additional visibility options. And those are the options we have available inside of our steps. So moving forward, there is flows. So you have the flow, which is your funnel, and it has the steps inside. You can have unlimited flows on your website. Each flow has an option to import and export this would import and export the structure of the flow. This would be so that you can move it to another website if you wanted. The page builder content in each step, you would use the page builder's tool for importing and exporting. You can also duplicate flows and steps. And there's an option to set a flow as your home page. So if your entire website is going to be a single sales funnel, there's an option to do that. I'll show you in a moment. And before before you make your funnel live, there is an option for test mode. You're gonna to wanna to take it out of test mode before going live. So let's go ahead and take a look at these options right here. So I can name my flow right here. You'll have to do this after creating a new flow each time. Right here off to the right is where you would enable or disable test mode. When test mode is enabled, there will be an orange notice on the bottom of each step when you're viewing them. Let me go ahead and click on update. So to take this flow out of test mode, I will click on that check mark to remove it and then click on update. Now, when I click on flows right here to display a list of my flows, you see I have an option to import and export. Also, when I hover over a flow name, you'll see I have the option to export and clone this entire flow. Lastly, I'll show you how to make this flow the homepage of your website. So I'm going to go to settings and then reading and then right here where it says homepage in the drop down at the bottom you see the name of the first page in my flow which was landing page optionally if I just wanted to make the homepage the checkout page I can do that but it makes more sense to choose landing page in this case I'll click on save changes and now when I view the front end of the website, you can see the home page was that landing page. And if the buyer clicks on order now, it's going to take them to the next step, which is the checkout form. And that pretty much wraps up this getting started tutorial for cart flows. We have more tutorials on our
our website. Also remember to follow our YouTube channel. So when we upload new tutorials, you'll see them there. We have a Facebook group where you can go and ask questions about cart flows. And we have a very responsive support desk to help you with any questions or any issues that you may run into. We want to help you have the very best experience using cart flows. We just can't wait to see what you create.